Hello, dear ones. It's Alice. I am of the stars. And I've come up with, crunched some numbers and come up with some figures for population decline because of the HIV uh, pandemic here in the United States over the next 10 years. Um, I'll put the figures in the blog, and I just thought I'd also put these on the video for my YouTube vi viewers. Uh, some of the data that I need, I really need, such as the 2016 uh, births and deaths in the United States are just not available right now. But I do have paired data for births and deaths in the United States as of 2014. Um, there were 2.626 million deaths in the United States in 2014 as compared to 3.986 million births in the United States then. Uh, this resulted in a positive population growth. Uh, and I have actually figures for population growth as of 2017 in the United States. The figure was uh, a little less than 1% positive uh, change in population. It's 0.73% change in population. You can compare this to the percent change of population in Africa as of 2017. It was 2.5 percent positive change in Africa as of 2017. When we say as of 2017, I believe what's meant is the most recent data as of 2017. That might be 2014 or 2015 for all I know. Nevertheless, going on what's available, you can see that in Africa, which is hard hit by, um, by the HIV uh, pandemic, uh, there's still a 2.5% population growth and pretty much steady around that range for the last few years. I believe this has to do with the greater, um, with the greater uh, fertility rate in, in Africa. Um, because it surely doesn't have to do with better treatment as far as drugs are concerned. It, it, Africa is somewhat underserved, as I understand it, with regard to the United States in that, re in that respect. Um, so, so now to get back to the United States and the, the blossoming bell curve of the pandemic here, um, the following is a conservative estimate. I had first thought it would be much greater. In fact, I still think that, but I err on the side of conserv conservatism for the sake of uh, it, my readers. <laughs> um, I, I'm estimating, this is the cons conservative part, I'm estimating 50% survival rate to puberty for the births that take place in the United States. That's with, that's assuming treatment with proper antiviral medications for neonates immediately after birth if the mother has HIV or AIDS. Um, so say a 50% survival rate to puberty, including um, all children, not just the children with HIV. Um, so, uh, if that happens, then what we'll have, according to my figures, is 0.2% uh, population decline per year for the next 10 years. In other words, slightly negative population growth. So we should plan for that. We have to figure out what to do. Um, in the meantime, we can also look forward to um, new discoveries with regard to treatment of the of the HIV virus and, and ways of living that will bolster the immune system, I feel. Also, we could increase the birth rate here, especially with regard to uh, parents that don't have HIV yet. So that's a possibility. That's something that, that might be looked forward to. And, and furthermore, I have an idea. That, that I'll discuss that about a change of lifestyle that might be extremely beneficial. Um, I think that we've had a sudden creeping up upon us of this HIV epidemic and that 
of the children being born, uh, reaching puberty right now, that um, almost all of them will have been infected with HIV um, by the time they reach puberty. That's what I think we'll find. I believe testing has been insufficient. Testing should be freely available on a volunteer basis, volunteer basis through the parents, uh, through schools, free. And I think that, and that would give us a better grasp of the extent of the pandemic amongst children. We need to know whether or not the children have HIV. This is for parents because there are treatments available for young people that would improve their chances of surviving if in fact they have HIV. Um, further, I'd like to just mention to parents that I believe that the drug trade in the United States is marketing to uh, elementary schools right now, maybe even preschools. And I believe that they're soliciting from amongst the economically deprived members of, of, of classes throughout the United States, pushers of, of drugs who are uh, eight years of age or so, old enough to be able to hold their own uh, physically in fistfights and so forth against younger children. Um, I, uh, I believe this is a conscious campaign by the drug industry in the United States to get children hooked very early. The result, though, is that children are uh, often exposed to um, HIV infection by the people selling narcotics to the children who often ask the the children for sexual favors. This is my intuitive grasp of the situation. They ask these children for sexual favors in, in return for giving them drugs. And, and it's the sexual favors that cause them to the children to be, um, to be infected with HIV. Because of the uh, lifestyle of young people today, the, once one child is infected with HIV in an elementary school, all the children are at, at risk of being infected within a year or two. Um, so, so there's that for parents to look out for. Here in Los Angeles, my intuition tells me that there are a few other areas uh, of danger zones for parents to know about with regard to their children. Uh, one, I think, is the, is the parks, the, especially the Santa Monica Mountains parks right now. Um, I've seen evidence of, of marijuana use in the parks. Uh, I've also seen one person who I was told by a ranger exhibited the signs of co cocaine addiction. And those areas that I've seen or felt, like clearly felt some difficulties had to do with uh, Gillette Ranch, um, Malibu Creek State Park, and Paramount Ranch uh, right now. Uh, I just have a feeling that there's cocaine use there sometimes now both during the week and on the weekends that might result in acts of violence, say rape, um, uh, in those areas. And so parents should be very careful about letting their children hike in unsupervised in those areas, both weekdays and weekends. In addition, uh, because I'm an avid hiker and I'm a longtime member of the Sierra Club, I'm very familiar with all the trails around the Santa Monica Mountains, and I've noticed at the e, uh, west end of Victory Boulevard, the trailhead that goes up into the upper Las Virgenes open space area, uh, there are there is trouble there, possibly because of the restrooms there, with the um, young adults, very young adults from the surrounding neighborhoods being uh, potentially preyed upon, at least people looking out to do that with them, uh, who appear to be uh, like lower economic, socioeconomic status, and may, and also it, it appears to me, just judging from the years that I was working at the UCLA School of Medicine uh, in an area by the HIV clinic there at that time. Uh, so I'm familiar with the look of of advanced AIDS, and it looks to me like uh, there may be men there at that area who are um, 
looking out for the young adult boys uh, with the chance of hopefully of a sexual encounter which might result in HIV transmission to the youth of that area. And also I've noticed in the Chatsworth area in the mountains there uh, that there are people either living or lurking in the underbrush and the chaparral in those areas in, in places where the young adults, especially young men, uh, play after school. So I would suggest parents advising their children to exert the utmost caution in regard to uh, hiking and walking and exploring and adventuring in the Santa Monica Mountains until the danger, which came up in about 2016, I think, is cleared up. Okay, there's that. Also, I've noticed that in the children's matinees uh, around the area, it's very important for the mothers not to let their young sons go to the restrooms unattended. Um, the young boys, sh I feel, should use the women's restroom and the supervision of their mothers if there's no other possibility. That's because I've seen uh, one case last year of a young boy being very afraid to go to the restroom and his mother forcing him to go, not understanding the difficulty that apparently he had encountered before there, and of a, of a young, young man in his 20s immediately going into the restroom after the child um, went in, and the aspect of the person that went in was, well, it's what they call, you know, the Claire people, they call it predatory, you know. It, he was up to no good, it seemed to me. So, so the thing of it is, at times when we think that there is no danger, in a great open spaces around here, at a children's matinee, you know, at, at times when we think there is no na danger, parents need to look and see if there is danger and talk to their children about, especially about any close encounters they've had. And now to move on to positive possible changes in lifestyle that might result in stabilizing our population in the United States in the coming years. I had one thought about a lifestyle change that might be, that might be helpful. I thought that if, um, if young people were to marry very young and remain faithful to each other until their first child has been born, uh, that we might be able to stabilize the population despite the increase of, of HIV virus transmission. Uh, apparently, uh, children that are born infected with the virus uh, have a short life expectancy, too short to expect them to reproduce. And so it's important to conserve the lives of the children that don't have HIV and to help them ha have a chance to have a child uh, before they make a lifestyle choice that um, puts them at greater risk of infection with that virus. I'm also thinking that uh, given the, the more lax um, standards of uh, chastity in the world today, it, it might be a good idea to to allow children to have children at, at a younger age, a very young age, uh, say soon after they become capable of doing so, and then make the rearing of these children responsibility and joy of the greater family, including the parents of the children and the children themselves. So that's my thought. It, probably there are other solutions, but I consider this to be one of the most um, family value oriented solutions. I think that in this way we could improve the um, compassion, the compassionate feeling of, of family life in America at a time of relative difficulty with regard to uh, with regard to the progress of this pandemic and we could increase the joy that parents and children feel at the time when their children become pubescent because their their first acts of sexual union would be joyfully anticipated by the family instead of 
feared and instead of resulting in an abortion which does cause in my opinion great soul wounding they would result in rejoicing that's all for now y'all take care i wish you the very best in these trying times and i i feel certain that as we draw together as communities all across the united states we'll come into a greater understanding of family values we'll raise the most beautiful children there ever were and will stand up strong in the face of adversity with the courage that that it takes to meet this challenge and we will successfully persevere through it and come out on the other side the better for it love you all lots